What excites me most about being a statistician slash data scientist is that I get to work with anybody who has data. So I work with neuroscientists, aerospace engineers, historians, policymakers, anybody who wants to collaborate with me to tap into extra expertise to do more with their data. Now, I'm going to tell you about my first statistical consultation 20 years ago. I was three weeks into a six-month trip backpacking across Africa. And I was in the Western Sahara Territory, and I needed to cross the Sahara Desert. And the way that people did that at the time, there weren't any roads, was uh, people actually drove across the desert. And me, with just my backpack, decided that I was going to hitchhike my way across the desert. And so I went to a place where the cars would caravan to start their journey across the desert. And I asked about 20 different cars and their drivers if I could get a ride with them. And every single one said no. They had no room in the car. Finally, one of those drivers said, if, if you really need to, we can rearrange stuff on the roof and you can ride up on the roof rack. <laughs> and so I bungee corded myself to the roof rack and for five hours, we drove uh, across the desert to the border. And at the border, that was the, the, as far as they were going to take me because there was a minefield, and they didn't want me on top, of the, on top of their car going through the minefield. It was here at this border that I met this fellow. He was a PhD biologist, and he was studying the Saharan Desert fox. When he found out that I was going to go to statistics graduate school, he was like, you're a statistician. I need to work with you. I have questions. And so for the next 10 or 15 minutes, I tried to understand what his study design was and how I could help him analyze the data. Unfortunately, I had to go before I could provide any, any positive value to him. And, but I did learn something, so I got something out of that transaction, which was a lesson that the need for statisticians is everywhere, and that there are literally PhD scientists wandering the Saharan desert looking for statisticians <laughs> to collaborate with. So it was here at this, at this border that I saw this bus. Two French guys had bought the bus, and they were going to drive it across and sell, sell the bus in Senegal. And so I went up to them and asked if I could get a ride with them in their bus. And they kind of looked at the back of the completely empty bus and looked at each other and then said, we, I could come with them. So we drove for three days across the desert. We're trying to cross sand dunes. We got stuck so many times. Uh, and every time we got stuck, we would dig sand out from under the wheels, push the bus, um, and continue our journey. But on the final day, in the very last leg, we got stuck on a beach in deep sand. And for eight hours, we were digging the sand out from under the bus. And we were sinking. And I was trying to tell everybody that we, weren't, that we needed to change our methods, that we needed to you know, stop doing that. And so at 1 AM, I was really frustrated because I couldn't communicate that message. And so in the grime and the dust of one of the windows, I drew a line at eye level, and I labeled it 1 AM. And then an hour later, we had sunk about six inches. I drew another line and labeled it 2 AM. And then at 3 AM, we had sunk another six inches. I drew the third line. I brought the driver to see this, and he immediately was like, oh, we're sinking. We need to jack the bus up, put boards underneath, and we did that, we pushed, and we pushed our way um, out of the bus. And the lesson there was that if you, if you have the right data, understood by the right people at the right time, that can be extraordinarily powerful. That, just even a crude data visualization, can get a bus across the Sahara Desert. So I brought these lessons into my professional work. And at uh, University of Colorado Boulder, I created LISA, 
It's the Laboratory for Interdisciplinary Statistical Analysis. And I train statistics and data science students to use their technical expertise in collaboration with researchers, businesses, and policymakers to do more with data, to get the right data understood by the right people at the right time. And this, uh, this model that we use is really powerful, where the students learn more statistics and data science by applying their classroom knowledge to real projects. And the domain experts also benefit by being able to do more with their data, publish in higher impact journals, make data-driven decisions for policy to serve society. And this model, though, I know from, knew from my travels, wasn't just relevant in the US. Students everywhere need opportunities to apply their data science. And domain experts everywhere, as I know, need statistics and data science help in their, in their research or in their businesses or policy. And so I created a program called LISA 2020 to create a network of 20 statistical and data science collaboration laboratories, like mini LISAs, in developing countries. Because it's not, it's not just students in the US who benefit, that's true everywhere, and especially in developing countries. So 10 years ago, I returned to Africa, and I went to the University of Juba in South Sudan. And there, I met with the registrar who told me a story about a student who was frustrated with his research. He was a master's student in pharmacy, and he was struggling for nine months trying to solve a problem, but he couldn't solve the problem. And so he decided to drop out of his studies, and as he was like withdrawing and, and literally walking before leaving campus, he met with the registrar, and the registrar found out that this problem was a statistics problem. And he said, oh, I have a friend in the statistics department. Let's go talk to him. And so they did. And then 45 minutes later, the problem was solved. Which just really underscores that power of having the right data understood by the right people at the right time. So in, we have that provided lots of momentum for the LISA 2020 network. We created 28 labs by 2020, and then now we have 35 of these statistics and data science collaboration laboratories. And each of these laboratories are training the next generation of statisticians and data scientists to collaborate with researchers and businesses and policymakers. And there's a great multiplier effect where the, the domain experts who work with the lab members, they get more data capable. They realize that they can do more with data and more with, with new data in the future. The students, they work and they improve their statistics and data science skills. And so together, they collaborate on projects and these projects have the potential to positively impact hundreds, thousands, or even millions of people. So one project, is from the Federal University of Agriculture McCurdy in Nigeria. This is one of our 35 stat labs. And they collaborated with local agricultural officials to try to tackle and solve a big problem in their state, which is the problem of post-harvest fruit losses. So fruit going from the farmer's field in the various stages and transportation, the market, finally to, to the plate of a person. There's a lot of ways that the food can spoil. And there was no, uh, no quantitative study about how much of this fruit was lost, nor at which stages. And so the students of the lab, and they um, designed a study with the faculty members they interviewed farmers, and they went through each of the stage of the process of the fruit, and they were able to quantify how much fruit was lost in each of the steps, and 
recommendations for how to min minimize those post-harvest fruit losses. So why do I talk about just this one project? It's because it's an apt metaphor for so much of the work that we do as academics. We collect the right data and we analyze it, but it doesn't get understood by the people at the right time who then have the power to enact our recommendations or make use of our academic findings. And so that's why the work of the LISA 2020 network is so important. Each of the labs are building up their local capacity for training data scientists, for enabling data-driven research, business, and policy. And then together, as a network, we are sharing best practices to be able to learn together how to best transform evidence into action by getting the right data understood by the right people at the right time. Our ultimate goal with the network is to strengthen these individual labs and to expand the network so that more students have the opportunity to engage in real projects and that there never will be a need for a student to bang his head against the wall for nine months or for a scientist to wander the Sahara Desert looking for a statistician to collaborate with. Thank you. <laughs>